Hello everyone, my name is Marcus Ianofsky. I'm the founder and principal of Message Agency. Aaron? Uh, hi, uh, Aaron Bauman, uh, senior software engineer at Message Agency. So we are a uh, firm in Philadelphia. Uh, we're also a B Corporation. Anybody know what a B Corp is? Oh, all right. So uh, B Corporations are um, for profits that are certified as businesses that have a triple bottom line, which is people, plan, and profit. Uh, and essentially, that you know, our fundamental mission as the agency is also to have a social or environmental impact. It's a very rigorous certification that we go through uh, to, to earn that badge. Um, and one of the reasons we are a B Corp is because we only serve nonprofits, universities, and foundations. Uh, and they're the toughest clients uh, <laughs> that are out there uh, because we usually they come to projects with so many constraints, right? I mean, clients always come to projects with constraints, but uh, budget's always one for our clients. Uh, the resources that our clients have, um, you know, at, at their organizations to kind of move this project forward, very challenging. They often don't have technical staff. So, you know, we have to deal with um, problems like migrations uh, often, uh, and we have to really figure out, I'm sorry that that's such a poor, uh, I don't know if you guys can hear the lights. Yeah. Put it just behind. Yeah. Right here. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. They're over there. Anyway. Yeah. So, um, um, wow, that's, that's probably not worth it. <laughs> okay. Those are options. Yeah. I think it's fine. Um, so, we're often put um, in, in a really tough position. Even, you know, we work for organizations that uh, have large properties as well as small uh, properties, and we've got to, you know, uh, even if they have a large site, they often still don't necessarily have the capacity in their organization to do this work. Uh, and so what we want to talk about today is some of the approaches that we take to planning and conducting migration, whether it's content or data, uh, from the perspective of the life cycle of the project. So there's, like I said, there's a little bit of strategy and, and sort of some higher level lessons and and then there's some um, discussion where Aaron's going to talk a little bit about technical tools and, and other things like that. Um, so if you have been a part of a website redesign, you know, we've kind of all been there. Um, you know, the website's ready to go. It's sort of built. Um, and but the content isn't in there. Or, you know, the data hasn't been migrated. And, you know, you, you have no idea um, how long it's going to take to get that uh, content prepared. Um, you're not even sure what's going to happen to the site once the content gets imported uh, because, as, as we unfortunately find out, uh, if you wait too long in the project, the content gets imported and suddenly there are all these other things that happen that you didn't consider. You, you didn't, um, you know, whether it's, you know, really lots of markup in, in these uh, you know, in body fields and all this old HTML or um, you know, the, the way the content was originally designed doesn't work in the format, sort of the new, uh, in the new design. Um, and, you know, the, the unfortunate part of this is too often migration doesn't get discussed until the very end you know, of the project. And that is, uh, it's a sin we all commit. Uh, it's one we used to do. We don't do that anymore because we can't. Um, you know, because of the constraints our clients have, we often have to, to figure that out uh, well ahead of time. So. You know, in terms of hindsight being 2020, um, some of the things that you run into if you do consider migration to a new project is definitely cost overruns, right? Because there's, if you're working with the client and the, the project suddenly was supposed to be six months and now it's eight months and nine months, even if you're not doing work actively because you've done your job and you're waiting for the client's content, there's still meetings, there's still check-ins, there's still, you know, trying to help the client move forward and, and you you expect that you've been done. Um, and and it usually does run into some, some challenges with the budget. Uh, definitely will blow your schedule. Um, sometimes it requires redesign and rework, as I was saying earlier, right? You don't know what, what the, sort of once you put that content into the site, what it's going to look like. Um, it also leads to poor change management because if the, if the content gets imported, it's not working very well, suddenly everybody's scrambling uh, to make adjustments. You know, there's maybe a deadline that's still looming. 
and everyone feels pressured to kind of rush through those changes and make all these one-off changes, and they're not thinking systematically uh, about what they're able to, um, or what they uh, what they could do um, to make sure that it's a more of a modular approach uh, rather than a one-off approach for each case. Uh, and then documentation, uh, if you've already prepared documentation for your client, uh, if all these changes are made at the end of the project, then you probably don't go back and then actually <laughs> update the documentation with the other end. So, so there's, there's a whole bunch of reasons why um, you, you, you really, really should try to avoid waiting until the end. Um, you, you know, we had one cautionary tale. tale. Uh, this, this, was a, this was a client who we migrated, migrated from a completely custom platform. Um, it was both their CRM and CMS all in one, uh, you know, homespun platform, and it was unbelievably terrible. And we had to get them into Drupal. Uh, we had to migrate them into Drupal and Salesforce at the same time. We couldn't stagger the launch because all of their day, everything was in this one, like tangled up in this one system. Um, and, you know, when we looked at, uh, at the data, that we tried to do a, a, like an entity relationship diagram to figure out what the data was. And it was like a bowl. It was a mess. A real mess. Uh, and, you know, part of the challenge uh, is that we waited too long to really make sense out of that. We said, well, look, we're going we're gonna to design this. We're going to make sure that we, uh, you know, try to consider all your use cases. We're gonna, we want to we make this optimal for you. And then we're going to go back and figure out how to move this stuff. And the problem with that was it was there was so much complexity in the data that we could never, there were all these things that got missed. And, and all these things we had to account for that we really couldn't account for until very, very late in the project. So um, that, that did, did not go as well uh, as it could have. Um, so uh, some of the things that I think uh, that project caused us as well um, is sort of, as I said, waiting <coughs> until the site to start getting the migration. Um, what, what I mentioned earlier, ignoring key source data or content when, when, when you're designing. Uh, the site. So, so what, what we do now um, is, you know, rather, rather than designers just looking at layouts, we, we get our designers to look at architecture first. A lot, a lot of the content, we, a lot of the sites we build have very structured content, and, and so we don't let them necessarily define uh, what's going to show up in that layout until they've looked at the source content and they've figured out what is the structure there, if there is one. Um, you, you know, know what, what are some of the ways the metadata they're, they're using? What are some of the things that uh, that, that they, they are that, that provide meaning to the client, or at some, some point provide meaning? And if, and if we, we don't figure out, out what that is, may have changed, or we, we may have a better recommendation for how to change it. But, but if we don't do that and account for that, that it's, it's going to show up later, uh, unfortunately, later in the project itself. Um, also, assuming that that's the source data that there's it's of consistent quality. So, so with this client, the, the data was about 15, almost 20 years, years old. And they had changed their schema over time. They, they made changes to this custom database. And so all these records, you know, there was just all this messy data, things that didn't make sense. Uh, and we really needed to understand the sort of history. We had to sit down and, and figure out, well, you know, what, when, when were you making, making these changes? What were the changes that you made? And, and what can we, what, what is a dead end here? What is the information that we really, you know, that you're not using or that will complicate the migration? Do we have to account for this? Do we have to try to, you know, transform this stuff? Can we abandon it? Um, also, reproducing legacy architecture in your new solution. Uh, that's something that I think um, is a, uh, unfortunately, clients are often you know, very, very um, uh, you know, attached to how they uh, collect data, how they, the reports that they run. Um, you know, they don't want to have to think differently about how to generate new reports. They don't want to have to think differently about, um, you know, what, uh, how to structure their content. It's just, we've been doing it this way, and we want to continue doing this way, doing it this way. And the tendency there is for them to kind of push you to, to just reproduce the bad stuff that they already have. Um, and, and then, of course, course underestimating effort resources uh, that are required to do this. Um, you know, 
it, it, it's, it's, yeah, we can, we can bring, bring this over, over we'll, we'll, you know, we'll write some scripts, everything will be fine. Uh, uh, but really, the amount of time you have to spend digging into that data, you, you really have to go spelunking in that data, especially if it's a big data set, and like I said, it's you know, something that's accrued over time, um, you, know, you have to do the hard work, or it's, it's really going to show up uh, at the other end. Um, so, so one, one of the things, things that we have started, and, and, and you know, know what we'll do is sort of talk about now um, how we do migration, migration uh, at the draft project lifecycle, because um, we, we always begin on day one. Day one. So, so if you know, know there's any migration that's going to be involved in the project, our project managers have a separate migration track in, in our roadmaps, and, and we make sure that we get the source data that day. We don't start the project until we have the source data. We um, you know, arrange for access immediately. Uh, we make sure that all of the, um, the parallel track that's running, that that gets as much attention from our developers. And, and actually, you know, what, what's really beneficial is you know, having Aaron and other engineers digging into data right away means that the designers Actually, actually get, get some, some information, information that's, that's useful to them early on. Um, and, and so we're, we're doing, um, you know, we're, we're doing, doing some test migration, migration sometimes, or just you know, going in and, and, uh, and, and really digging into the information uh, before we even have the designs. Um, and then also just, you know, you know making sure that, that you have time to validate what, what you've done. So, so trying to do a, you know, test, test migration as early as possible in the project getting your clients, to, even, even if the site sort of isn't quite finished, um, you know, as I think this gentleman over here was saying, you know, build these views that this client can kind of go in, it doesn't matter what, what it might look like, um, you know, they're able to actually, you know, run some sort of uh, filter and kind of look at the data, uh, even though there, it might not be, you know, on a page, right? Um, making sure that they can validate what you've done, because the other thing is you, they know their data better than you do, and there's some things that we can anticipate and some, you know, validation we can do, uh, but they're the ones who are really going to understand if something is in the right place or not. Um, so it's pretty primitive with the two, it's like to mark something done, I have to go to the revision field and write capital D, yeah. Do you, do you want to repeat for, for everybody what it was that you did at some point? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, sure. So, well, 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 I had, I had imported uh, a lot of content from the WordPress site to existing Drupal site because our firm, firm merged with a, another firm. We were the survivor. And uh, so, so I created these custom views for some people on our team. Uh, and they weren't very technical at all. It was just like this is developing people. You go, go in and take a look at these pieces of content and make sure it looked okay, the things were tagged correctly. And, and when they were, were then, then I had them scroll down to the bottom, or you had have the revision field, mm -hmm. and just type the word done. done. And in the view, view it had a filter. If it done, done was in the revision, and then you could display that record. So uh, they, they knew they were completely done with everything when their view was in. Mm -hmm. So there's, so there's lots, lots of clever things, things that you do like that to, uh, to, get, to get, get that information, information um, evaluated. evaluated. Um, but, but you want to make sure you do it at least twice. twice. Right, you, you do the initial, initial migration and get things validated, validated and then you're, you're probably, probably going to have to do a second migration right before launch. launch. Because, because if the, the, the existing site is still up and running, running there's, there's going to be new things added to it. Uh, and, and you just, just want to make sure that you are planning for that as well um, in, your, uh, in, in your project plan. Um, so uh, Aaron's going to talk a little bit about sort of considering the source data. Uh, sure. sure. So, so, um, you know, you know as, as, part part of the, the, as part of the, part of the information, information architecture discovery process, process you know, we're looking at the, the, the source, source data, data, the legacy site, site you, know, you know, whatever, whatever those data sources may be, a legacy CRM, uh, an, old an old spreadsheet, spreadsheet uh, Foxpro Fox database, database, access database, database and those, those the, the insights, insights that we glean as developers from, from examining the source data, data can, in, can, actually can actually inform the planning, the planning for the new site, site can, inform can inform the data architecture. architecture. Um, so, so, you know, you know we, we go through relatively, relatively rigorous um, inventory, inventory audit, audit of, of, those of those systems. Um, um, you know, if you know, it's, it's a Drupal site, site we're looking at how many, many content types are there, what, what, what are the taxonomy, you know, what are the fields on 
each of, each these, of these things, what are the users, users and, and you know, you know, how frequently are those used, um, and, and, this and this sort of coupled with, with the, the what, what we call top task analysis, analysis we, can we can sort of figure, figure out where the intersections are. are. So, so, you know, during, during our analysis, analysis with the client, client the, the, the client may say, oh, well, you know, you know, our, we, know we know that, that we definitely, definitely want to preserve, preserve the forum. The forum, the forum is, is something everybody loves, loves and we definitely, definitely want to rebuild that in our, in our brand, brand new site. site. Uh, uh, but we, we look at look the, the con content, content inventory and see, uh, actually, actually your, your forum, forum in the past, past 10 years has 100, 100 posts by, by five, five users. Um, and, you know, here's, here's how much it's going to cost to build that in Drupal 8, you know. Do, 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 we're, not we're not telling them what to do, do but they, they can, can then make a, a more informed, informed decision uh, because, because we have presented them with, with, with a complete, complete picture. picture. Um, so so uh, that's, 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 that's one example. example. Um, in, terms in terms of, you know, you know the, other, the, other, the other things, things that we sort of discover, discover through the, the sort of inventory, inventory and audit process are outliers. outliers. Um, you know, you know like, like, do, do, do you do really, really need all of these user-generated user -generated tags, tags that are, that are have are highly, are highly duplicative? duplicative? Or, or, you know, uh, here's, you know, you're, 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 you have, again, again one, one or two users, users that are using, using this feature. feature. Um, is that, is that something, something worth reproducing? reproducing? We're, looking We're looking for 80% solutions, solutions here in general. general. Um, we, we want to, in other, in other words, words, we want to develop a site that will meet the needs of 80% of their users to find that sort of sweet spot between... You know, you know, budget and features, features to, where to where we're not spending 80% of our budget on the last 20% of and the and features that, that, that are not going to get used. I think, I think one, one thing that helps, helps with that are uh, our content inventories. inventories. How, many How many of you have gone through and, and sort, of sort of put a spreadsheet together and looked at the existing content? Okay, okay, so, so a few. Um, you know, we, we require either, you know, clients sometimes will get us to do it, it um, and, then and then others will give them, give them a spreadsheet and say, you have to do this. this. And the reason, and the reason you, have you have to do this is even, is even if we're not, not doing, doing an automated, automated migration of that content, content you're, you're going to have to figure out how to, how to get there. there. We've, We've had sites that sit for five months because the client hasn't gotten the content done. If I find that to be the problem, just don't do it. Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't have time. I'm busy. Yeah. 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 Can you get done? Can you get done? Can next, next week? week. But you but haven't done the content. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a real challenge. challenge. So we, we, we have ways of kind of working with clients to try to uh, walk, walk them through, through what they've got to do to prepare. Uh, but one, one of those is making sure that every site has a content inventory, whether we do it or they do it. Uh, and, and each line of content is accommodated for it, right? So, so, so each, each row, row um, you know, they, they decide, are we deprecating this? Are we transforming this? You know, are we completely rewriting this? And who's responsible for it? And when when they have, have to get this to us, to us. And, and, and there, um, it, it, it helps them hold themselves, themselves and, and their uh, and their teammates, teammates accountable. And I think, and I think to, that to that point, point you, know, you know, if the if client sees, sees uh, we, we have, have uh, ten thousand old blog posts, and, and we have one person responsible for doing those, doing those transforms during, during our migration, migration period, and they're available for five hours a week. Like that's 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 not happening, right? So. So again, so again, having the data, the data to make those informed, informed decisions, decisions, maybe they can say, okay, well, we want to make, make sure our last you know, one or two years of blog, blog posts look, look real good. good. Like we're like going to strip, strip out, out. we're going to manually, manually sort of curate, curate, curate each of those, and then, and then the, rest the rest of it, you know, send, send through the, the strip, 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 strip the Microsoft Word HTML, HTML filter, and that's all we're going to do, you know, as of this date, right? Right. Or something like that. Or or, or, you know, from, from the, the developer's perspective, perspective again, again, we can look, look at, at the content, content and say, oh, well, well it looks like, like you know, around, around this time, time your editors stopped, stopped pasting, pasting from Word. From so, so maybe that's, that's a good cutoff cut point. point. Or, you know, the, you know, the data, data schema, schema changed here, here and people stopped using this old field and they're now onto this newer, newer field. So let's, you know, merge those. I mean, I mean, each each source is different, so you really have to sort of become an expert in, in that, that material, material. Um, and, and, and speaking to do it in a form way. way. Experts in that material, um, the, 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 the notion of going to the source, um, we, will we will ask the client if, if they still have some, some contact, whether they're a current staff, staff member or maybe they were volunteer, volunteer or, or a consultant, who created this to begin, to begin with? with? And, and can, can we talk to them? 
because, because sometimes, sometimes it's helpful, helpful especially, especially with really, really sophisticated, sophisticated data sets. Um, um, we're, doing we're doing one right, right now where it's, it's, uh, it's a Fox, Fox Pro. Pro. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, 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 the, yeah, the Fox, Fox Pro site, site you know, we're, we're lucky, lucky enough to have, to have access to, to like, like the, guy, the, the IT guy, guy who's been, who's been who's, who's, whose project this has been for the last 20 odd years. Who can, who can look at, look the, at the columns and tell us, us you know, one by one, by one oh, that, that we don't, we don't use, use that since, you know, 1996. This, this one we stopped using in 2007. So, so you know, that's, that's lucky for us. For us. Otherwise, you know, we, we would be having, having to sort of reverse engineer, engineer all of this and figure out, out which, you know, which, you know, which of these three unique keys, keys in this table are the identifiers. Are the identifiers. Um, so, um, so, yeah, so, you know, we have used him as a resource. version Pro. What's that? What version? I have no idea. I have, I have no idea. We got a uh, database, database dump. dump. What's that? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I, I, maybe. maybe. I, 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 have I have no idea. idea. And, and, and part, part of our contract, contract you know, part, part of us mitigating, mitigating our risk as a, as a vendor is saying, saying you know, we don't, we don't know anything about Fox Pro. Pro. We don't, we don't, we don't want to know anything about Fox Pro. Pro. Like, our, our agreement is you're going to get us, you know, a open format, you know, CSV or a SQL dump that we can use. And, you know, if you, if can't, you can't do that, do that like, like you need to, you know, you know, we'll, we'll renegotiate and find someone who can and figure out where that is going to get, get paid for. Um, so, so just, just that, that process alone, alone getting, getting the, the, the database dump from Fox Pro took, took probably, probably two months. Two months. Mm -hmm. You know, from, you know, the, from the time we start, we realize that they have this Fox Pro that that we had to extract that information from them. You know, via by way of this third party. Um, so, um, this so this is why we say start, start early. early. Um, so, so, you know, the, you know, the solution we have now involves uh, Dropbox, Dropbox and, and uh, a Docker image, image that runs MySQL or MySQL, MySQL, MySQL server, server Operations, Operations Studio, Studio on my OS X and, X and <laughs> dumps it into a CSV via, via a node package where I can, where I can then deal with, you know, you know an open, an open a text-based text -based format. format. Um, and if you can't talk to the person, uh, uh, see, if see if there's, there's any, any documentation. documentation. That's, that's usually, usually not as common either. either. Um, um, usually they're, they're in this position of coming to us because they, they, they you know, you know haven't, haven't maybe governed, governed the project well. Uh, but, but if you're lucky, you might, you might be able to get some of that information as well. Um, and, 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 I and I think the other piece of that is um, making, making sure, sure you understand, understand their business requirements in order to interpret the data. The data. You know, you know content, content is one thing. It's content is sort of, sort of a little, little more obvious, obvious. You know what, what uh, why content types are important, important. Uh, but, uh, but it's, it's not always the case, case uh, if it's, you know, an entire CRM uh, uh, or like, a, you know, uh, all, all of this information, information that they've been asked uh, on, um, you know, you know any, any objects, objects that they've been collecting for that long. And you, and you just need to understand, understand and make sure you're taking the time to understand, to understand the business behind it. Um, uh, uh, go to go. Go, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so, so these are... These are just, 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 uh, just uh, to, sort of to get, to get you thinking, thinking about the things to look, to look for during, during the, 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 the content, content inventory, inventory or data or audit. Um, you know, we don't, you know, have, we don't have to go through all of these, but, but you know, common pitfalls, pitfalls uh, uh, encoding, uh, uh, timestamps and time zones versus, versus some, some other format, format for, keeping for keeping track of, track of dates and times. And times. Um, um, you know, you know, tax, tax, tax taxonomy or whatever, or whatever it, it happens to be called, called whatever kind of categorization system you have in your old system. Um, you know, the, you normal, know, the normal, the level of sort of normalization in the old system. Um, and, and, you know, how your, your Drupal, Drupal design, design, your Drupal, Drupal database, database design, or whatever your target, target system design will work, work with, your with your older, older design. design. Um, you know, for example, People, people who work, work with the Drupal API, API closely, closely will know about, about Delta, 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 Drupal's Delta, or, or you, know, the, you know the, the, the multiple, multiple field, field, the cardinality of fields. Um, I see a lot of, a lot of blank stairs. stairs. But <laughs> anyway, anyway, there are, there are a lot of sort of Drupalisms in the, in the Drupal database, database design that, that don't, don't really, really translate to other systems. systems. So, so you know, you know, whereas, whereas Fox, Fox Pro or, or Salesforce or other systems will use a join table that that. That, that doesn't usually, usually exist. exist. That's, That's not like a standard, standard Drupal, Drupal concept. concept. So, so, you know, you know keeping, keeping these things in mind and, and planning, planning for that when, when you're reviewing, reviewing the, data the data can help, can help inform sort of how, how long is this migration going to take. take. Um, um, and, and I think, you know, you know going, going back to, 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 to sort of what we're talking, talking about, planning, about planning, planning early, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily scale. Your migration is not going to scale in terms of, 
It's not going to scale, scale linearly, linearly in terms of the volume, volume of data, of data that, you that you have in your source. source. It's going to scale in terms of the, the volume of, of, of types, of, types, of, of tables, tables, or, or, or you know, the, you know, the size of your schema, schema more, so more so than the volume, the volume of data. data. If, you're if you're migrating, you know, you know a, million a million users, users like that, like that migration is going to take a long time, time to run. But you only, but you only need, need to migrate. You only need to write, write one, migration, one migration, right? If right. You're if you're migrating, you know, you know, users, users and, and content types and taxonomy and files. You know, you know, if you only have five of those, you have to write. All of, all of those individual, individual migrations, migrations along the way. So, so we, also we also have to think about, think about you know, know when is the, where is that trade-off trade -off point between, between you know, obviously, obviously I'm not going to copy and paste a million user, user records, records, but, but um, if, I have, if I have, again, again if, I have if I have to write 12 migrations for a total, for a total of 100, 100 blog, blog posts, posts, you know, maybe, you know, maybe it's, it's worth just looking at each one of those and copying copying over what I need. And not, and not worrying about, about spending, spending all this time, all this time developing, developing a scripted, scripted migration, migration plan, plan. Um, and, 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 really and really using, using the migration, using, using the new site as an opportunity to sort of reevaluate, <coughs> reevaluate um, your content, and, and put, and sort, put of sort of the best foot forward, forward for the new the new, the new applications. You no, know, uh, uh, someone, someone mentioned earlier the notion, the notion of, of uh, heavily, heavily formatted, formatted uh, body, body fields. fields. And, and that sort of HTML, HTML I think it was you brought, brought that, that up. Uh, um, can we just can talk, we just about, talk that about that for a second? And, and some of the ways we can do that. Absolutely. So, 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 I mean, I mean, so again, so again like, there's like there's no, no there's no there's no silver, silver bullet, bullet for content, content you know, in, 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 terms in terms of refactoring, refactoring HTML. HTML. Like, like we can identify, identify patterns, patterns, and we can and we can process those and transform those. those programmatically, um, but, you know, we can't, can't say, we can't write a write script, a script that's, that's going to say, oh, well, oh, this, well this table, table would actually, actually look better if we pulled it out of the body and put it, body and put it into this other field, field. Or, or this image, image you know, we want, we want this, this image to be a banner, banner now, now. Sometimes and sometimes we want those images, the inline images to actually show up in the footer, or sometimes, you know, your content may need individual attention. attention. So, so, I mean, keep, I mean, that, keep in that in mind again, again when planning these migrations. When I when I say the migration, migration doesn't scale, scale I'm talking about automated, automated migration, migration won't, scale won't scale with, with your content. Your content. But, but somebody who actually, who actually has, to has to go through and, and you know you know move move things, things around because you've redesigned, redesigned your layouts because you've because you've redesigned, redesigned your schema because you have you know normalized how images are captured through through your node forms. Um, um, that, that is not, is not something, something that, that I, mean, I mean, it can, it be, can done. be done, I'm sure, I'm sure it, it could be done, be done but again, the trade-off trade point may be greater, greater than your budget, budget to, to sort of to, to, do, that to do that in a scripted way. way. We've, we've, we've had, had some scenarios, scenarios where our clients want us, want us to do a migration, and there isn't sure. enough, sorry, Oops. there isn't enough content um, to warrant writing the script, and we'll just, we'll just do it. We'll just all get together. And you know everybody takes a bunch of nodes, and we'll move it over. And it's faster uh, than trying to, to write a script. I think that's exactly how we did it. I mean, yeah. we had like, yeah. like I said, five or six business development people going into like mm -hmm. when I when I took the, the the WordPress content and created CSVs from it. I got rid of image tags. I got rid of links. I mean, because the links are like links to like other internal pages on a site that's not going to be there anymore. Or they may be absolute links and not relative. Exactly. Yeah, absolute. Just, Even yeah. relative links would have, wouldn't have worked either <coughs> because it was another, a, a diff, completely different website. Yeah. And just made it very nice and clean. I kept like eight one tags or eight two. That was that was about it. And then people just went in and they just you know worked on it. And I think it was maybe like two or three weeks. Five people working on maybe a thousand nodes. I mean, they tell me, oh, I sat on my couch, watched a movie, and you know whatever. But it's it was. We have the people to do it, but the, I don't think any animated script would do that. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, you know, I, I did some little thing we had. I didn't know what the CMS, they had no access to the CMS anymore, except only add contents. And we just had hired a team that went through, copied all the pages, brought them to each one to a node, plain text, then we went back and added that into and added the styles and so forth that were needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's sometimes you just cannot get, yeah. get around that. Um, images, you may be able to target the image in the, in the body, right? So you might be able to leave images there, um, although with responsive sites, that's you know, a little harder. Um, but for the most part, yeah, you, you, you sometimes just have to do that hard work. Um, um, do you want to skip ahead sure. to um, 
And so the next the next couple slides are just uh, sort of example like before and after of the um, the entity relationship diagrams that we uh, just as an example for for this a site that we did recently, um, you know, in looking at the old site, uh, came up with the sort of legacy ERD and sort of used that as a starting point to build the information architecture for the new for the new site um, and identified you know where where are the sort of relationships there that don't make sense and how can we um, how can we make better sense of those and, and make it make it easier for your users make it easier for administrators to, to kind of keep track of things so what we came up with is you know, more complicated looking um, but a better normalized system that will allow us to sort of lower the bar, lower your, lower the barriers to entry for, um, for their users. Uh, there, are, there are fewer required fields, fewer requirements, um, and fewer sort of strict hierarchies and strict relationships between the different um, data entities. I'm going to give one specific example from this project. Um, they had a three-tiered, very complex taxonomy that was it was hierarchical it was kind of rigid all, you know really difficult to work with once you're sort of looking at that uh, as an end user you're trying to figure out where these you know taxonomy terms are in a tree um, and we were able because we were normalizing things and, and we were structuring the data in a different way we were able to convince them that actually those those terms they were using weren't really hierarchical uh, because they could use their, you know, it was a multi, they could select multiple. And we figured out how to make those three different fields. Well, and we could also see from the hierarchy, they had duplicated, like at the, at the end of the hierarchy, the, the sort of leaf nodes, they had duplicated because it was not actually a hierarchy, like Marcus said. So, you know, they might have one term that appears under, you know, under the second level parent. And then the same term in a in another branch of this of this hierarchy tree because again they're not actually they're more like tags that they're using these things that they forced into the you know they've straightjacketed themselves yeah they so really did. so you know fortunately for this client they were ready to sort of re-examine some of their business processes around this um, and really let us transform you know transform the system to make it simpler. And also transform the displays <laughs> that the users would encounter in trying to just filter um, using these terms. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Um, so some of the things we've talked about, we're now sort of in the design phase. Um, you know, we've gone through in the discovery uh, and, and talked about some of the things that uh, we've been discussing. And really, you know, once we you know, really understand what the shape of that data is, why is it the way it is, uh, what are some ways that we can improve it, then we're able to sort of bring that into the design, whether, again, um, it's a highly technical site and the design is really about schema, or whether we're talking about content in Drupal and structured content in Drupal. Um, but it really, it, it, has, um, it has helped us also show the client um, what they might be able to uh, to deprecate. They, they, you know, as I said earlier, right, clients, they, they want to hold on to their data. But when they see what happens in design, when we know that there are these problems and we try to show them in a prototype or a wireframe, if you keep this, this is what's going to happen. They see more clearly what it is um, that, that they are giving up, which is clarity and a good user experience, uh, when really there's a better way to do it. It looks like, did you have a, someone had a question? Okay. Um, another thing we'll do uh, is in the design phase, you know, start mapping fields uh, as we're designing. So, you know, you, whether it's content or whether it's sort of structured data, we will, um, you know, create um, build specs and we'll start saying, you know, this Drupal field that we are specifying is mapping to this field or this, you know, aspect of the source data. And that's happening as we are designing. Um, so that when, so when we get to the build, that is all sort of mapped out. Uh, and it means that it makes right, we can write the scripts earlier also in the process. So that's something I think that can get overlooked. Um, 
Once we get to development, um, one of the things that we also do is use wireframes to help. I mean, it's, it seems kind of obvious, but we use wireframes to help clients think about how to restructure their content. Um, when we're off building, we don't stop talking to them. We continue uh, basically engaging them around their migration. And we have, uh, we have some workshops we do with them so that they're prepared to move this stuff over. We give them the spreadsheet, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we'll help walk them through some examples, like what's your toughest challenge here, some, some content that you have that is sort of the worst case scenario. How do, we, how do we fit this in this wireframe? And we coach them through it. If we don't do it at this point, they always wait until they get the site in their hands to even start considering um, you know, not only how they're going to do it, but actually doing it. And we try to get them to write that content um, while we're building <coughs> and start sort of working on it as we're going. Um, and you can do it as soon as you know, any, even if you're sort of more agile and you're not doing a waterfall design, you, as soon as something is approved, you can get that, um, you know, uh, you can, you, either you or your client can start working on it. So do not wait. Um, you know, we mentioned a tool um, and, and using that to track uh, what you're moving. Uh, so that could be a spreadsheet. There's also, how many of you guys heard of uh, Gather Content? That's a really awesome tool. It's free um, and you can, it essentially allows you to structure, you can reproduce the structure of your Drupal content directly in this tool. Um, so you could create a content type and all of the fields. And there's a workflow associated with it. And so you know your, your, um, your client or your team can go in and start actually populating structured content in gather content. And if you don't, if you're not using things like paragraphs uh, in your new site, there's actually a migration path from gather content into Drupal. You have to be careful with it because it depends on how you've, um, you know, there are some complexities. So, you know, it would have to be a pretty simple, uh, yeah. It's called gather content? Gather content. It's actually, it? you said it was free, yeah. but it's, oh, not, it's not free. Oh, okay. We, well, uh, so we're, we're working with a client right now and they were using, unless it's only, it might be free for like a small amount of pages. It is, it is mm. it's free for a small This is a university, so there's it's, a it's lot bigger. of pages. Mm. So. Yeah. Um, is, yeah, there's like, it's a freemium model, I think. Yeah. Or maybe okay. a, I'm not sure if it's volume or like the number of fields or. I think it might just. I don't know. It might just be a trial. Yeah, it, it says it's free trial on the, on the website. Yeah. So a lot of our clients can use it. Yeah. And be we'll, done, we'll with be done with it before then. Um, but I don't think it's cost prohibitive either. It's like, I mean, I don't know if you guys are running into that, but. It's it's not, it's not very expensive, but it's it's not cheap either. But I we're at. The client that we're working with is at like a high level. They have thousands and thousands of pages, so that's, that's yeah. Yeah, I mean we a often factor. we often let our clients. We'll create a project in our version of Gather Content and let our clients use it. Um, you know, it's it's it, it has worked very very well. The other thing that it does is it forces folks to structure their content early, because they're seeing they're they're finally get instead of thinking through that title and body field and that's it or a post they actually realize that, oh, there's all of these various fields and there's this metadata and there are, you know, I have to, I have to like think about my content differently um, and think about aspects of it differently. So it, it's helped a lot. Um, so the other thing is we have a lot of uh, requests. This is about, um, you know, distributed, <laughs> distributed work. If the work is distributed, distribute the knowledge. Um, we often recommend that uh, you have some kind of training around this. You don't just assign, um, you know, uh, you, you talk to your, you know, uh, your key contact, uh, whether it's their project manager or another key staff member, kind of give them all the information and then hope it works out. Uh, you really do have to make sure they bring all the people who are going to do this to the table. And we often have a lot of clients who use interns to do this. And while that's great because it's, you know, free or low cost labor, um, you know, there are some challenges there, right? They're, you know, probably smart, smart folks doing this and eager folks, but, you know, they may have never done this kind of work before and you really should 
take the time to actually walk everyone through what does this look like. It's not rocket science. It just takes time uh, and, and planning to make sure that you do it. Um, the other thing is um, making sure that you're, uh, I, I don't know how many folks here are doing larger sites, but uh, with Drupal 8, we do a lot of sites that are extremely flexible. They're very modular, and our clients can actually create layouts and structure pages. Paragraphs are amazing for that. Um, and so we give them all of these tools to just sort of uh, either build microsites within their site or change layouts. The problem is um, after you know they get their hands on these tools, uh, you know you might have a home page that's got ten of these bands, and you know the reuse of one featured content you know mosaic is done three times. You know, and so the the challenge is that if you don't have the strategy, it doesn't matter how good the tools are. If folks don't understand the content strategy of the site and how these things should be used, they're going to misuse them. And, um, and you really do need to make sure that, uh, that that training is a part of the conversation. Um, OK, so a little bit about scripted migrations, Aaron. Um, sure, so uh, you know, I think we've hit on most of these points already. Um, some, I mean, some of the sort of strategies to use in a scripted migration, uh, you know, think about, you need to think about whether it will be an ongoing migration, whether, you know, your, your new site will live in parallel with your legacy site, and if you need to keep that, migra that content in sync <laughs> during your development, or, you know, more, more easily if you can plan for a content freeze at some point and execute the migration. So, you know, um, for for some, maybe an enterprise level company, it's not practical to say, okay, none of your content editors can edit or add any content during this month that it's gonna take to move your millions of nodes from your old site to the new site. In that case, you need something like the migration API, which will let you keep your new site in sync and just push over, basically, pull over new content as it's added to the legacy site, and then on deployment or launch day, you sort of flip the switch and everything is there and you're good to go. Um, you know, that is, that is one of the more complex options. Um, you know, your, your budget might not allow for that. You might be looking more at, you know, okay, I'm gonna take a snapshot, I'm gonna build my mig migrations based on that snapshot, and then on deployment day, I'm gonna freeze the legacy site and run my, take my final snapshot, run the migration again. Um, that gives you a little more flexibility because you can, you know, you can execute those, you can execute more transformations, um, you know, after taking that snapshot, you don't have to worry about, you know, conflicts or, or race conditions. Um, and, and, you know, you, you may get, you may get a little more mileage uh, from the Migrate API. Um, so, you know, I think also with, with even with a scripted with a automated migration or using the migration API, you know it's it's going to take it's like I said it's going to scale with the sort of number of migrations that you're planning, um, and it, they're going to take time. I mean this is not this is not necessarily a small endeavor. So again, you know find where that where that trade off point is for for you as a as a vendor or. You know, make sure your vendor knows if if you're the client where where it's going to make sense to 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 automate that process. Um, it may not be obvious. It may be a, a, a much higher number than you thought. Um, you know, I the the Fox Pro migration that we're still working on. I've been working on for uh, a month now, um, and you know, w the client hasn't even had a chance to see any of the data yet. I haven't even we haven't even. Um, got to the point where the data is like consumable for for a Drupal admin. Um, so you know, again, start early. Um, can you? Um, yeah, validating. Migration. Yeah. So so validating. So again, you know, the the UAT process is a great opportunity f to familiarize content editors with the Drupal admin interface um, and having their you know, content that they're already familiar with from the old site is a great way to onboard them into that process. 
um, and a great way to validate your your migrations. Um, and again, you know, we try to do this as early as possible. So, you know, I love the idea about creating customized views to show them, uh, to show your editors what their content looks like now. You know, even if it's in tabular format, they can see, oh, you know, that's how this transformation is going to work. That's not exactly how I wanted it. You know, we need to revisit that process. Or, oh, you know, this, you swap these two fields. Like, only somebody with, there are certain issues that only someone with domain knowledge is going to catch. So it's important to involve your, your customer early or to get, you know, if, again, if you are the customer, to get, your hands on that sooner rather than later because your mistakes will sort of comp can compound if you're building dependencies and migrations which you know are sort of uh, linked together. Um. Also during UAT, um, we like to not release the site for UAT if there's a migration until the content is there. So that the client is looking, they're, they're you know evaluating the site with the test content or with the migrated content um, and the other thing that we like to do is if it is using any of um, any sort of content governance workflows, uh, that that is also in place so that, you know, folks with different roles and different permissions can actually use this sort of the build site with the content that has been migrated and test that workflow. Um, sometimes content moderation workflows get also pushed to the end, uh, but that's something you should make sure is there. Um, and, and again, real content will stress the design. Um, so, you know, that is the time, during UAT is the time when you want to see that and know what's going to happen. Um, so, if you've, done, if you've done all these things, uh, launches should be easy, very rarely are. Um, and then we've got some tools uh, that we can ask, uh, get some questions. Yeah, so, so finally, tools. Um, you know, and again, I think we've talked about sort of the the spectrum of migrations, uh, everything from just sort of brute force with you know spreadsheets or gather content all the way down to um, custom migrations uh, and and custom scripting. Um, so just to touch on a couple of a couple of things in the sort of middle layer here, um, content import, um, formerly I think node import or node import export. Um, is a sort of very lightweight module that will take a CSV and pop it into entities. Um, so that's that's useful, you know, again, in this sort of one-time scenario or, you know, the test and then deploy scenario rather than the sort of ongoing synchronization. Um, the next level of that uh, feeds. And feeds, uh, honestly, I used a lot in Drupal 7. Uh, the migrate API in Drupal 7 was uh, not as accessible, let's say. Feeds is, is feeds for Drupal 7 was uh, very powerful and gave you a lot of the tools that, Drup that the Drupal 8 migrate API now provides um, in a very accessible way. So, you know, your mileage may vary between feeds and, and migrate API for Drupal 8. Um, but they, they work very similarly. Feeds has more of a sort of uh, uh, user interface. Um, although development on Migrate is, anyway, play around with both of those. Um, the Migrate API is very robust. Again, it's got limitations. We, so what I typically end up doing with Migrate API is start from, you know, if I'm, especially if I'm going Drupal to Drupal, I'll look for an existing Migrate. So the Migrate API works with, um, configuration files, and there are tons of configuration files out there for common configurations. So migrating from Drupal 6 to Drupal 8, Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, uh, there are some forthcoming for Drupal 8 to Drupal 8, uh, there will be Drupal 9, um, there's WordPress, you know, you name it, CSV sources, but a lot of those configuration files will still need your attention. So what I'll do is start from those and then you know, copy them into my own project and customize them for my own needs. Um, what I also have found with Migrate API is I always have a whole bunch of custom processors. Um, so the, the way the Migrate API works, again, from a high level, is um, for each, uh, each item of source data, each field of that source data gets mapped to 
your target field and get sent through a processing pipeline. And you can chain these, these processors together. So you know, one, one processor might strip HTML. The next processor might uh, download the images from you know, the, the HTML body. Uh, another processor might transform that into a multi-valued field. Um, the, the, the custom processors that I have found myself writing are to deal with you know, idiosyncrasies of the source data or um, you know, just weird formatting stuff that I have to, you know, they're, they're, I, I couldn't find a processor to handle a certain date format. So I just, it's a very simple, it's two line, a two line processor. Um, and Drush 9 has a gener uh, will generate a lot of those things for you. So Drush 9 can generate modules, various plugins, it, it, and migrate processors are one of the things that it will generate for you. Um, so Drush 9 is cool. And I, I also, we have not, I've not done a migration that's been scripted where I've not had some kind of uh, custom Drush script. So just, you know, at the end of this migration, using Migrate API, I run Drush. It does some cleanup to fix some things that would have been really hard to do with the Migrate API. Um, I'll just, I'll just, you know, sort of brute force those with, with my own PHP script. Um, and, you know, again, your mileage may vary depending on your sort of level of technical expertise. Um, I'm sure there are other tools out there, too. Uh, these, these are sort of our, our toolbox, though. So just really quickly, um, I think we, we've said all these things are just our lessons learned, um, knowing that audience and designing for the 80%, um, cutting your losses and not <coughs> designing around emotional attachments. Um, and not recreating problems that uh, exist in the source data. Um, don't for this is Aaron's. Don't force Drupal developers to become business analysts. Uh, they don't like doing that. And um, but include them in the migration plan. You know we we've got Drupal's uh, developers in front of clients, uh, making sure that they understand what's what's happening with that data. Uh, and don't assume that the same approach is going to work for every project. Every data source is different. And just just one one point on that, you know, in terms of being a business analyst, as a as a Drupal developer, if you ask me if something is possible, I will I will say yes, um, because that's not the right question. Probably <laughs> what you're really asking is like, can I afford it, or is it feasible within this budget, um, or within this scope? So, you know, again, I, like that's where the sort of business decision comes in that that your developers are not the ones who should be making that. So thank you. Um, we still got some time left for questions. Or any other um, tips that other folks have uh, have found useful that they want to share? Are, are your slides posted somewhere? Uh, yeah, they will be, uh, they'll be on the site. OK, great. Yeah. thank you. Yeah, yes. I just want to say thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. A lot of questions. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. We, we never know if, yeah. uh, if it's going to be helpful. Um, and one person um, mentioned earlier about you know going waiting to go from seven to nine. Um, maybe we just really quickly for the folks who aren't developers mm. in the room. Um, you know, it's really advantageous to migrate to eight now uh, to take advantage of. A, I mean, it is really it's just it's it's a really great platform and it's uh, uh, far superior to seven. So it's something that you know will be a good move. But the theoretically, the migration. <laughs> from eight to nine uh, will be far more streamlined and, and where you can sort of more easily reproduce um, you know, that site in nine uh, with, with much less effort. Going from seven to eight, you're going to have to rebuild. I mean, we've never had a migration from six to seven or from six to eight without doing a rebuild. It, 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 it kind of doesn't, the effort involved um, doesn't warrant necessarily just reproducing the existing website that you have. It's probably old. It probably is using patterns that um, you know aren't maybe best practices, and you're going to want to update uh, you know your approach to how you do layouts and other things. Right? It might not be a site that is um, responsive, so you're you're probably going to want to redesign anyway. I'm sorry. So when nine is launched, seven is no longer supported. There's a there's a one year of overlap. It's, it's a one year overlap. There's going to be, so, so uh, be three. A year and, and a half. For a year. A year and a half. A year and a half. Uh, Drupal 9 is coming out June 2020, 2020 and 20, uh, December 2021, Drupal 7 and 8 will be end of life.
And eight. At the same time, yes. That's because it's something like Symphony. Symphony. Or similar, or? Symphony. Drupal 8 is running on Symphony 3, which mm -hmm. is end of life in 2021, in December 2021. So that's we can't clear. run, I mean, that's the whole platform. We can't run on end of life software. Mm -hmm. So not even support, it'll just be. I mean, so I, I can't predict the future, but what happened with Drupal 6 is there's still, like there's still people supporting yeah. Drupal 6 and writing security patches. Yeah. Maybe that will happen for, but then you're talking about not only for Drupal, but also for Symphony and the whole stack all the way down. So it's less likely, uh, but it's, it could happen. Any other questions? No? All right, thanks everybody for your time today. Enjoy the rest of the camp.